Hello my wonderful and amiable listeners. Welcome to another interesting news. In order to support Mr. Peter Gregory Obi as president of Labour Party, the Independent National Electoral Commission INEC objected to Mr. Peter Obi's putting its paperwork on display, according to Vanguard News. The Independent National Electoral Commission INEC has clarified why it did so. On Thursday, the election body vehemently objected to the acceptance of various papers that Peter Obi and the Labour Party had given to the Presidential Election Appeal Court PEPC as proof in favour of their appeal. However, as the hearing on Friday, INEC lawyer Kemi Pinero informed the court that the electoral body had refrained from delivering certified copies of the document, primarily election results sheets, because Peter Obi and the Labour Party had not raised concerns about the election conduct in those areas where the documents were consigned. The local government areas where the results sheets were supposed to be filed, according to Pinero, did not have a unified situation and the petitioner had erred by expanding the scope of their claims outside those regions. Peter Obi won numerous municipal elections, even those they were not counted, according to a statement that was made. Since all the parties to the petition had agreed to make the make such comments at the addressing stage of the proceedings, Dr. Saman found out found that it was improper for INEX counsel to insert insert the statement into the proceedings. He accused Peter Obi of neglecting those neglecting to execute the law and attempted to integrate in the petition administrative duties. The remark that INEC issued at the attorney were being called into court in into court infuriated Judge Aruna Simon Tasamani, who is presiding over the case. AC8A from eight local government districts in Bayesa State, 21 local government districts in Adamawa State, and portions of the River State and Ninja State, as promoted by Peter Obi and the Labour Party. This has been this has been entered into evidence by the court. We recall that the issues in the 2023 Nigerian presidential election are economic, human, and political issues that were discussed prior to during the general campaign period from the end of the primary period in June 2022 and the final day of campaigning in February 2023. In the wake of the party primaries, several major factors for the upcoming general election campaign were noted, namely ethnic, religious identity, the role of Buhari and his incumbency power, the economy, corruption, the personal brands of candidates, and public anger with the status, but with the political status quo. Ahead of the official campaign period. Major candidates were to release their policy document. Abubakar did so in late May, but Peter Obi and Ashiwa Jubala Ahmed Tunubu did not unveil their policy documents until after the campaign period com- commenced in September 2022, with Tunubu releasing his manifesto in mid October and Peter Obi releasing his manifesto in early December. As the campaign developed, other issues like climate change and sport development rose to prominence. However, civil society reports from January 2023 claimed that the majority of campaigning was not based on policy issues as personality politics, identity politics and negative campaigning over two policy discussion. Nigeria has lost Hundred billions, hundreds of billions of United States dollars from corruption since independence and its corruption perception index scores 
as scores has worsened since 2016. However, after the primaries, analysts noted that unlikelihood of corruption becoming a massive electoral issue as both Atiku Abubakar and Tinubu have credible long-standing major corruption allegation. Peter Obi's candidacy slightly altered this dynamic as allegations against him were more minor. Another reason for low focus on corruption was the failure of Buhari's anti-corruption war, the promise of which was central to his 2015 campaign, while major issues, while more major issues like insecurity and poverty have taken center stage, corruption is still a pervasive policy problem. For Atiku Abubakar, although there are some allegations surrounding his civil service career, much of the graft be alleged is based on United States Senate Committee on Homeland Security and Government Affairs reports from 2010 that directly implicated Abubakar and his family in a massive intercontinental bribery scheme. Report issued in the wake of the William J. Jefferson corruption case, which also implicated Abubakar, stated that Abubakar, then wife Jennifer Ewen Giora Douglas, brought over $40 million in suspect funds into the United States, while Atiku Abubakar was vice president with the sources of those funds being bribes given to Abubakar by businesses in exchange for preferential treatment and contract in a process akin to crony capitalism. These bribes and other suspects cash transfers led to the American government's financial crime enforcement network to later place Abubakar and his wives on an international banking surveillance watch list. Atiku Abubakar has repeatedly denied the report, report findings since its release in 2010. Accusations against Tunubu, Tunubu were also serious but different to Atiku's. In a form of corruption associated with the term state's capture, Tenobu is alleged to have continuously ajacked billions of naira in Lagos state internal revenue for his own personal and political aims. Through a law he signed while Governor Alpha Beta consulting, a company evenly linked to, to an alleged to directly controlled by Tenobu and his allies has the sole right to collect state taxes and receive 10% commission for the collection. The founder of Alpha Beta alleges that Tunubu was as directly profited from the allocation for about 20 years plus. Tunubu is under active investigation by the Electoral Commission, Electoral and Financial Crime Commission as at June 2021. That will be all for now. Please don't forget to click on the like and subscribe button. And let us know your thoughts and your opinion via the comment section below. And I will see you on the next news.